All right, guys, good afternoon. Welcome aboard to the market recap and preview of the next week. My name is Carlos Garcia, founder and CEO of Gar Capital. We do this after the end of every week, the trading week. Uh, we go over what we did in options, what we didn't do right, what we did right, what we could have done better. We work together to see exactly uh, how can we improve in the future. There's always room for improvement, guys, in anything that you do. Uh, no one's perfect. And uh, the idea is not to focus on perfection, even though I love to be perfect in trading. Uh, it doesn't happen every week. The idea is, are we progressing? Are we getting better? Are we understanding what we're seeing? So since you're watching this video, I know you agree with me. It's all about progress and getting better. So watching this video is really uh, something that tells you that you want to learn more and get better as you go along. And that's why you're part of this channel. So again, thank you so much again. My name is Carlos Garcia, founder and CEO of GAR Capital or GAR Capital, whatever you want to say it. But uh, I call it GAR. I uh, used to call it GAR, but it's GAR now. And for everyone who wants to know what does GAR Capital mean, my last name is Garcia, GAR Capital. This was way before Billions and Axe Capital, I promise you. I started in 2014. I think that show has been on uh, less than, uh, has been on TV less than GAR Capital has been open. So. It's not a copy, I promise. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Saturday. It is August 19th, 2023. Got some good rest last night. Much needed uh, after a um, lack of sleep week uh, with futures and everything going on. Always want to be on top of things. Sometimes you're going to lose sleep. Sometimes you make up for it during the weekend. Let's go and get started. Uh, the Dow closed up 25 points on Friday. NASDAQ fell about 0.20. It was green for a slight while. S&P flat. 0.01%, 43.69. The volatility index fell 3.3%. Another Friday, another VIX fall. And uh, dollar doesn't show today right now. So we'll probably get that on Sunday when we open. The Russell 2000 Futures Index. We played IWM calls. We'll go over that here in a second. That was up 0.34%. So happy Saturday. Good afternoon to everybody. Before we begin, I want to go ahead and let everyone know that we do have a masterclass deal going on. 50% off masterclass. That includes 10 live one-on-one -on -one classes with your trading coach slash teacher. Mind you, the gentlemen that actually do teach you, I'm the one who's taught them. So, And again, I speak to the staff every day. So again, if you ever have a question and you're on Masterclass, even if you're not on Masterclass, just DM me. Like I always said, DM me any questions you may have. Private chat to communicate during the day with your coach. Again, that's with WhatsApp. Options pre-recorded courses, one and two futures course, Forex course, available to on-demand on the trading journey. That is on the website. Lifetime, this is probably the big one everyone likes. Lifetime signals on options, futures, and Forex. I've been here for nine years. Uh, October 15th is the actual date. Uh, let's make it another nine years at least. Lifetime access to our investing club. That's me. That's part of the uh, investing club. Pretty quiet um, in terms of investment club as we know. Uh, we're trying to see if we can find some good deals to scoop up some shares. But nothing as of yet. Community support from traders, investors, and business owners from all walks of life. That, that's the chats. Uh, it's a great community. I'm glad to have you on board uh, once you join. There is only 12 seats available. Uh, use the coupon code, code GARSCHOOL, G-A-R-S-C-H-O-O-L, during checkout. This is the lowest price we've had masterclass. Uh, it used to be $5,000. Now it's $2,500. And the thing that stands out the most, guys, is really the lifetime signals. If you just have premium signals... That's $200 a month times every month for a year. That's $2,400. Again, you're basically, instead of getting an annual plan for $2,400 and just paying $200 a month for premium, you'll get everything for $2,500, and that's lifetime. So that's why there's only 12 seats available, just for the fact that, again, it's just to be taken advantage of. So, again, glad to have you on board on Masterclass. Hope you guys join. Uh, hopefully, we get those 12 members in, and then I get to say hi to them, or if they're just uh, upgrades. Uh, I've talked to most people that on the Discord. Um, I don't get DMs every day, but I do love to hear from you guys. So that is the deal. Uh, that is the masterclass. Again, use the code G-A-R-S-C-H-O-O-L. That's GAR School, 50% off. Get you all set. Again, 12 seats from available. All right, so that's enough about masterclass. Uh, oh, masterclass did get a trade yesterday, so let's go over that. Masterclass, 100%. <clears throat> uh, Juan, one of our teachers, got AMD 104 puts for this week. 118%, well done to Juan. I did not trade that personally. Not for any reason, just for the fact that, uh, again, I, I, we just had a pretty decent week and I didn't want to go any more than we had to. And we did IWM and uh, I just missed the IW, uh, AMD. I wanted to go for next week. 
Juan really wanted to go for this week, so congrats to him and the team. Uh, he called it. Juan, give him props, man. Juan Gomez, well done. Okay, let's go over the week in trading. All right, so this week we went five out of seven. Really, we went five out of six because Exxon Mobil was open on the 10th. Uh, that was last week, and we didn't catch that. That was part of the watch list, unfortunately. Uh, we got reversed on with crude oil falling. We got AMD. We missed DraftKings. Uh, Tesla, Tesla twice. Obviously, Netflix and IWM. IWM was done yesterday. Uh, let's go ahead and go step by step and how we did. Exxon Mobil. All right, Exxon Mobil. We opened it on the 10th. I just want to make sure the actual date of that... Let me get my let me get my calendar here. The tenth was on Thursday. So make sure that we have it set. So here is last Thursday. We got the break that we wanted. Even continued higher into Friday, even a little more into Monday, and then we fell on Tuesday. Uh, that was the Fitch downgrade day uh, overnight on Monday, and I believe we had some China news regarding some deflation. That was what caused crude oil to fall. So you can see that was on Tuesday. Let's go ahead and go to Tuesday. Here you go came back down. Uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, we did bounce off a key trend line so rather easily, but you could see these three here, and you can go ahead by going by here. Let's go ahead and edit the properties. Pretty much just chop uh, headlines, and you could see three tops, three bottoms. We can go with that. So where do we go now? If we break 111, I definitely want to take a shot at 113 and make this back on XOM, and I think we can. So let's go ahead and put an alert at 111, and then that'll get us to the 112, the 113 level. I think we can get this one back, guys. That's gonna be on my watch list again this week on Exxon Mobil. Break 111, we'll, we'll target 113, 112. Again, guys, we still have a gap to fill. Just because we didn't get it this week doesn't mean we can't get it next week. So let's place that alert at 111. We'll break, we'll target 112 to 113. That's that trend line, and we'll be able to, to make up for that trade uh, on Exxon. Just sucks that we didn't catch it, but. I'm not gonna give up on that one, on XOM. So we'll place that alert. I'll put that on the watches and charts this week. AMD, AMD. We did calls this week. Uh, let me see the exact date that we filled. Was the 14th? The 14th was a Monday. Only the 14th. Let's look at it. So we're gonna go to Monday. Monday got the pop above 109.59. That's what I was looking for. We traded the 113 or the 112 calls. We traded the 112 calls, got in the money. Uh, let's see here, 112 to 113 right here. So it did hit in the money. I didn't write that, so let me make sure. Let's see, we say hit in the money. All right. And we got as high as 65%. Uh, we got it at 164. Uh, that was here. I think we got it the same day, that Monday. So we got out in the money. Well done, team. And then we got chopped around, and then on Wednesday we fell with the market. So, again, perfect, perfect execution on AMD and for calls, which was tough, but we got it. 30%. Again, we learned from our mistakes. We just want to hit base hits because anything could just change right away. It did. Uh, so, we got as high as 65% and in the money. Uh, so, AMD, well done. Uh, if we're looking for AMD again, let's just break above 110 again. If we do, then we'll take a look at some calls. Uh, we'll put the alert here at 1. 0951, that's that green line. And the green line is important because that is the level that we played before. And again, it's the exact same up that we set up. This was the June highs. So I want to go to our Discord and take a look at the watches and charts on this AMD trade. Because we knew about XLM, but I want to take a look at this AMD trade and what exactly happened. So you guys can see every time we have the analysis. Uh, AMD, above 113, right? That's a 20. Target the 115, 116 zone is the 50 DMA. We got more upside to 122.50 if we continue. I moved my alert to 113.41, which would confirm, but then an AMD did break our alert. So I'm going to wait for the alert above 109.51. 113.41 would be a nice confirmation, but as you can see, the 20 DMA, which is the alert that we looked for for that break, that's our, that's really our momentum indicator, at least short term, below it or above it. 109.51, let's see if we break above 111.12. Uh, again, you could go either way on this one, but last time we rejected it. So again, we want to be very careful playing AMD. I think XOM is probably the better setup, but uh, we'll keep an eye on AMD. Uh, look how much it fell. It's below the 100 day moving average. If you're looking to buy shares on AMD or add some more, your level's pretty much right here at the 200 day. 
that's 9107 to around 9655. Not a terrible place to add some. I would say the lowest probably you'll go is around 88. And again, worst case scenario, you have a gap to fill at 75. So again, you do have a little bit of risk if you get into around 96, you're about a $20 level away uh, from that gap to fill if we start getting the October move down. So right now you're at a point where if you wanna take the risk, fine, but paying cash, pay, uh, staying in cash with a 5% yield, 4.5% yield on high yield credit, high yield savings is probably your best bet right now because you're just not there yet. Prices are lowering, but we're not at Black Friday shopping. Not where we can run into Best Buy and get a TV super cheap. That's not where we are yet. So it's going to take a little patience. Again, the market's not going anywhere. Take our time. But uh, AMD is definitely something that we're watching. DraftKings. Now, this one was tough. DraftKings, let me go ahead and bring up the hourly. This one was tough. We were looking for a break. We got in when? Uh, let me make sure the date. We got in on the 14th, which was on Monday. So we had the 30 calls. Monday the 14th. Monday the 14th is right here. Okay, we're looking at for this double top break at 29.57. We were just targeting 30.14, which is the bottom end of about two weeks ago, where we have a gap to fill on the daily. It rejected us and we fell down pretty ugly. So just a reversal on DraftKings. Uh, we went for it, it didn't work out, unfortunately. Uh, so we just had to hold that L. That was pretty much the only L for the week since ExxonMobil was week four in terms of stocks opened. Tesla. Tesla was the big one, as we know. Tesla is the one we've been talking about really since 250, guys. We were talking about continuation lower. We talked about this gap fill. We got it. We talked about this gap fill. We got it. Now what? How much more can Tesla go? Tesla needs to break above the 100-day moving average, which is around 220, before we can go long. But in terms of going lower, we need to break this low here at 212.42. And if we do, then we could target the 203, 205, so the 200s, all the way down to the 200 day. Once you start getting to around $200 and around 196, that's a pretty good level to start adding some Teslas, way oversold now. So Tesla, I expect a little bit of a snap back bounce. We actually had a green candle on the daily, even though the stock was red. But again, you have a slight gap to fill 218.66. If you get above 220.46, we can start talking about playing a bounce, but it's a till right now. Uh, it looks like we may break below the lows of 212.42. We'll target 200 to 205. That's the trend line that we had really since October. Uh, excuse me, since February, uh, the what, January lows? So again, as long as we hold that trend line, I think we're going to be okay uh, in terms of Tesla. Tesla is right now near the February highs. Let's see if it holds that level on Tesla. So kind of in the middle. I'm glad that we caught it, and uh, we did. We caught it twice. We did the 220 puts. Again, that was targeting that, that uh, gap fill. Let's take a look at it. Remember, we were targeting here at 235 once we broke that, and then we targeted here around 220. Those were the gap fills. So again, we played the 225s and the 220s. The 225 puts hit 100%, 108%. We also got it later in the day, 100%, then 692% on the runner. And then Tesla on the 220 puts in the money. They're still in the money. They're for next week. And they're in the money, 204% currently. Uh, so well done to the team on Tesla. Again, it's nothing new. We, we hit Tesla twice last week uh, on put side. So we've been writing that down. Netflix played that gap fill of 40901, played the 400s. We bounced a little bit. Uh, I got out, obviously. It's for next week. Netflix 400 puts, they're not in the money anymore. Got in at $2.72, got out at 423, 55%. That's where I got it. 200% uh, in the money is what we did on Netflix. So well done on that one. IWM, this is the one we did on Friday. And again, all I was playing here was the trend line bounce with the 100 day and the 200 day moving average as a bounce. We got in the money as high as, as, high as 152.20 or so. Um, so again, we got out for 20%, get everyone to get a snack before the road. So again, gets, gets us happy that we had one extra trade, uh, one little one extra trade for the win for the week coming up. And uh, five out of seven this week, 71%. Not the best. Uh, still a green week. Uh, just wish that ExxonMobil would have hit. Um, but again, that's that reversal. We should have been six out of seven this week. But uh, we just have to get better. That's all. Uh, ExxonMobil, I don't remember if it was green or not. So let me see if I can bring this up on that. Maybe it was an opportunity to close at an earlier price at some profit. But even closing early, look what happened to Tesla. Continue to fall. So it's not as simple. Uh, on the 10th, uh, the 10th was... The 10th was what? We got in 
on Thursday the 10th, we were 13% at 9.55 in the morning. And then that was it. So we got green on calls again on the 11th. Uh, so then we got us down as 20%. So again, choppy. We saw that on Exxon Mobil. And uh, we just have to eat that one. And well, I think we're going to get that one back. So I'm not too worried about it. DraftKings sucked, obviously. But Tesla did great. If you held runners, you did great this, this week. Uh, even without runners, you're green this week on, on trade. So about 225 bucks if you're doing a $500 risk position on each one. So again, you know, worst case scenario, it paid for your premium plan. Worst case scenario, it doubled up your basic plan if you got out at the same time. But the runners is where the meat is, at least this week. I did not personally have any, but if you guys did, congratulations. I'm very proud. And uh, I know you guys like these big movers um, in terms of, you know, these bags, and I, I'm all for it, but they're very hard to come by. Last week, we didn't get momentum to the downside uh, on Tesla, if you guys remember. We finally did this week. So again, luck is just preparation meeting opportunity like we talked about. Nothing has changed. So that's where we are for the week. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500 in general. Um, we'll take a look at futures here. We'll go to the daily. Uh, we do have this gap, but again, this was a gap of the change of contracts for futures. So could that fill? Sure. Uh, we could just put that if you want. Um, I don't think that's something that, you know, all traders are looking at, in my opinion, like other gaps, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. 43.25, that's the level. Nice green candle here, kind of a shooting star green candle, even though ES was red, but uh, it could be a reversal here. Keep an eye for next week. We do have Jackson Hole coming next week. We're going to go over the whole week uh, in terms of economic uh, data as well. But in terms of the S&P 500, holding around 43.70 or so, 43.67. Again, that's the low that we had back in June. Do we retest those lows and bounce? That really is dependent on many factors, as we know. We have a trend line really since October. We broke it before in March, and then we bounced uh, still to the upside. So, you know, breaking the 50, yes, that's important for shorts. Breaking a trend line, that's important for shorts too, but it doesn't mean that we're going to crash either. You're just at a point that stocks are not very, um, not very attractive here. When you're getting a 10-year treasury yield at 4.251 or a, uh, a high yield uh, savings on SoFi for 4.5%, it pays to pay in cash right now. It pays to stay in cash. And what we're trying to do is use options, futures, Forex to make money that's a little higher than uh, the uh, high yield savings. So S&P 500, again, not too worried on it. Uh, again, 43.50 or so, you have a gap to fill right around 43.22. But that's really the two, the 100 day moving average. Could we test that and bounce? Absolutely. But as of right now, um, tough to short and tough to go long. That's it. Uh, IWM, we played calls. So again, we were playing the bounce and uh, IWM actually did well today. Uh, in terms, excuse me, Friday, 0.54% to the upside, outperforming the major uh, stocks or the major ETFs. So again, you always want to find strength out there or you want to find weakness and play it accordingly. Uh, we're taking a look at NASDAQ. NASDAQ filled this gap. And you can see a shooting star candle. Could be some support holding here at 14774. I think that we continue up tomorrow. Uh, excuse me, Monday. We'll continue some more upside. But something looms very large this week. What is it exactly? It is NVIDIA reports earnings on, on, uh, on Wednesday. So let's take a look at it. I don't have any risk open for the weekend, at least that. So nothing to really go over. I'll go over the... Uh, watch list this weekend for you guys on the discord nvidia big one that's the only one in my opinion that matters right now is nvidia because it's such a big stock and has moved so much so nvidia reports on wednesday after the bell let's chart it nvidia has a huge gap to fill at 318 guess what that was the last earnings they had and everyone thought to short it and it soared so very difficult if we take a look at nvidia's earnings uh, NVIDIA's uh, uh, options chain, it's very expensive. You're talking about minimum $12, $15, $18, and in so on $20, again, closer to the strike. I would not trade this on Wednesday. It's just too expensive. If you're trying to go for a lotto, be my guest, but you have both ways where you can go up or down. You're below the 20, you could always break above 480 and get to 500, or you break below 380 and you're going to get down to 300. So again, Risk reward isn't the best. We don't have the best cards right now. So I definitely don't want to add more risk here on what I don't know will happen. We want high probability setups. Right now, NVIDIA is not there. 
So we talked about AMD. We know that semiconductors kind of move together. If NVIDIA does well, AMD will do well. That's what we traded with AMD. I think we had a runner ahead of earnings for NVIDIA and we caught it. So uh, we talked about NVIDIA, uh, AMD earlier. Will that be a way to kind of trade this? Maybe if we get above 110, we can kind of use that or you know, use NVIDIA's pop if it goes higher or lower. Let's take a look at the semiconductors, not NVIDIA because we don't want that much risk in terms of earnings moving forward. So that's really the only one in my opinion and this is probably the last of the big earnings reports. The rest, I mean Lowe's, you know, Home Depot uh, uh, reported earnings, they beat and raised. Zoom reports, again, I don't trade that. Kohl's, I don't trade. Advanced, I don't trade. Foot Locker, I don't trade. Uh, Snowflake, I don't either. Burlington, I have traded, but not a lot of options. Volume, Marvell, and Infirm, and Ulta. So I can't really say any of these provide any kind of extra juice for this week. I think NVIDIA is going to be the one that we're watching for the most part. Let's go to Forex Factory. Take a look at the week. Oh, here we go. We're going to go to this week. Apply settings. Uh, we do have... That's done with. We have the Flash Manufacturing PMI on Wednesday. Flash Services PMI on Wednesday as well. Same time. Services and Manufacturing. New Home Sales on Wednesday. The BRIC Summit. Those are the countries uh, that they're trying. That are more oil-based. They're more petroleum. China, India, Russia. Uh, that's a summit that they're working on. I guess it's kind of the alternative to the G7 or alternative to NATO, even though NATO is more of a military thing. Uh, I don't put too much emphasis on the BRIC stuff. The dollar still king. Nothing has changed. Crypto has tried. The euro has tried. Many countries have tried. It's still the king dollar. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to go to the store and use BRIC currency to buy a soda at 7-Eleven. Uh, you know, you can't really buy gas with the euros that I know of. Credit cards, debit cards. That's kind of what works. Dollars. Core Durable Goods, Durable Goods Orders, FOMC Harker Speaks on Thursday, Jackson Hole Symposium. That's the big one. That's on Thursday, uh, all day, tentative. And we have Fed Chair Powell speaking on Friday at the Jackson Hole Symposium. Harker will speak as well. He's an FOMC member. And we have the revised University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment. So other than Chair Powell speaking on Friday, not much going on. Uh, we could add some flash PMI. Flash meaning it's the first reading. It's the first reading. doesn't mean that it's the revised reading or the final reading. We also have final readings down the line. So this is just a quick number, kind of like the Atlanta Fed uh, GDP figure where it's at 5.2%. Those are flash numbers. So again, it's not set in stone. So things like data get revised over time as things change. But the big one here is Fed Chair Powell speaking on Friday. So could we play a run up into Friday and then pull back on Friday? Absolutely. But as of right now, not much to do. Not much to prepare for other than you have your alerts, other than you have your watch list. But in terms of the market, you're kind of at a neutral right now because both have really... Now, for the first time, the pendulum has swung. If you remember a couple weeks ago, I said, what's the reason to buy here? Not really a good reason. Now you're starting to get to points where people may get interested in buying. You have the first two weeks of August that are pretty slow. Again, how are you going to attract buyers? You got to lower prices slowly, slowly and sure. You got you to see if you can get that allure, you know, if Tesla was at 150 tomorrow, would you go run and buy it? Maybe, maybe not. If Apple was at 150 tomorrow, would you buy? Maybe, maybe not. If Microsoft was at 200 tomorrow, would you buy? Maybe, maybe not. That's what the market is trying to do. Lower prices, says there's not a lot of demand for stocks when you have bonds paying so high or paying our high yield savings paying so high. So we got to incrementally find a price where everyone wants to buy. And I don't think we're quite there yet. And the only reason I say that, that we're quite not there yet, is because we're still just a smidge above oversold. And again, we have headlines like China, we have headlines like any kind of day that a Fitch or uh, all these other companies may think about changing their, uh, their ratings on banks. They're not even changing the ratings on banks, they're just thinking about it. So that's what the kind of the headlines that you're getting. You know, when people start thinking of doing something, what if Fed Chair Powell says, I'm thinking of raising rates again? The stock market gets affected because there's not a lot of liquidity, guys. It's just the reality. So all you can do is be patient, be very careful, and have a plan. That's it. If we have our plan, we can do well. And I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to be extremely cautious. I think that the first, uh, for the first of the month, I'm going to take a look here on the 
on the actual almanac. The almanac this week, last week was all bullish and we didn't get that. I think we had like one green day. This week we have the 22nd of July being bullish. Take that as you want. Uh, but again, I think we're kind of setting up for at least some kind of frustration bounce where everyone's buying puts. Um, I guess everyone thought today would melt down. Uh, excuse me, Friday would melt down. We didn't get that. So again, we got a pullback, but look how low we got. 43.50 and we got to 43.80. So kind of tough sledding there. So we'll be watching very carefully. There's no need to press risk right now. We need to see if there's a price where everyone or traders are in agreement that we're just a little long in the tooth oversold. I have no problems paying, playing hoods, puts all the way down to the abyss, but at the end of the day, guys, even that has its limits. You start getting oversold. If you remember why I talked about July 15th, we started getting overbought, and this is how you flip. So again, we kind of have to watch and see, kind of like a poker game. Hey, you know, what cards are they holding? Are we holding good cards here? Do we want to do anything here? Do we want to add risk? No, I think the best thing here is to stay pat. We keep our research. We keep looking. We'll, play, we'll make a plan for the watches that we have. We'll let our alerts dictate to us what happens, and that's it. Rinse and repeat. So uh, nothing to really be concerned with. I mean, other than headlines coming out, but that's every day. That has nothing new. So I'll keep an eye on what happens this weekend. But uh, a very solid week all around, uh, even with this tape. Um, I think we did pretty exceptionally well. Uh, Exxon being the only one since last week. But DraftKings, it happens. We just didn't get perfect. But next week, we're going to get better. We learn from our mistakes. And I think we still stick with the 30 to 40%. If we could ride around there, we'd want things to flip. Let's focus on not losing instead of just trying to make as much as we can because it's so choppy. And I think that's what we've been do doing moving forward. The runners have been doing the jobs for everybody. If you guys held Tesla or Netflix, congratulations. Great week for you guys. I'm very proud of everybody. Let's keep the momentum moving. Let's make sure to be careful. Focus on high probability setups. Don't change anything. Don't add more risk if you don't need to. Don't change your position size. Just stick to what you're doing moving forward. And again, guys, if you definitely excuse me, if you definitely want more details on what's happening in the market, join our free market blog. You don't have to pay for it. It's free for everybody. It also includes the trophy room and includes uh, the pre-market plan. So again, we'd have love to have you on board at, uh, to have more members on reading the stuff that we're posting and uh, getting you guys prepared as we go forward. So have a great rest of your weekend. I will see you guys on Monday for the next morning note and uh, have a great weekend again. Stay safe. We'll see you then. Cheers.